Justin Allgaier re-signs with Junior Motorsports. Pato Award. Turns out he's very popular, contrary to what IndyCar officials may believe. And Fox really needs to put truck series practice and qualifying on television. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Yes, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room because I know the comment section will absolutely bring it up. That is, in fact, Jeff Gordon's 2007 Chevy Monte Carlo SS with the Nicorette paint scheme on it. I know people are going to talk about it. It is very eye-catching and everyone's going to be paying attention to that. So I felt like we had to address it off the top here. Now, getting into today's actual news... Justin Allgaier has signed a multi-year extension to remain at Junior Motorsports through the 2026 season. So multi-year, it's a two-year deal. He and his sponsor, Brant, have committed for both 2025 and 2026 to Junior Motorsports. Brant will be on the car for 20 races in each season, and their relationship with Justin Allgaier will continue. They've been together since 2011. Allgaier has been at Junior Motorsports since 2016. And in his nine seasons together with the team so far, they've amassed 22 victories. They've been to the championship race six times, but they're still chasing that elusive uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series title. Allgaier, of course, does have a shot to make it to that final four race once again this season. Um, he's going to have to win in Homestead or win in Martinsville, or hey, he can still even point his way in despite having started off the playoffs in absolutely abysmal fashion. But for Justin Allgaier, that'll take him up to 11 seasons with Junior Motorsports, one of the probably, no, definitely the longest tenured driver at Junior Motorsports outside of Dale making his select starts. Um, I think guys like Justin Allgaier are good for the Xfinity Series. I'm happy that he's remaining down here. He did talk uh, last week on the Junior Motorsports social accounts doing a bit of a fan Q&A. And a fan asked him if he wanted to move up to the Cup Series. And Justin said he thinks about the Cup Series every single day. Like if there was an opportunity for him to go up where it made sense, then he would do it. But he also mentioned that with his sponsor, Brant, he does not think that moving up to the Cup Series makes sense for them. And he's happy to remain in the Xfinity Series. And I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think some guys kind of just know that like they're you know, their career might top out in the Xfinity Series or their career might top out in the Truck Series. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I think a veteran like Justin Allgaier in the Xfinity Series is good for the series overall. He teaches guys racecraft. You can rely on him to not go out there and just absolutely drive over his head and smash into people uh, left and right. And he's good to help bring up those other drivers through junior motorsports. I saw some people and replies on Twitter on Friday being like, oh, so he's just a pay driver. Yeah, dude, he's been a pay driver for forever. I mean, that's kind of what it comes down to. Everybody at Junior Motorsports outside of Carson Quapple and Josh Berry, when he was there, are pay drivers. And you'd be shocked to learn how many drivers are, in fact, pay drivers, even up to the Cup Series uh, level, or at least bring sponsorship along with them uh, for you know a decent portion of the schedule. So there's nothing wrong with that. And Justin Allgaier is out here winning races, and he's going to be in contention to win another NASCAR, or win a NASCAR Xfinity Series title. Sorry, he has not won one, so he can't win another until he wins the first one. But overall, I think this is a great signing for Junior Motorsports. I think this is a great spot for Justin Allgaier, and heading into 25 and 26 now, he doesn't have to worry about it. And hey, you know what if a cup series you know offer comes along then maybe it makes sense to go there but uh 11 seasons in the xfinity series with one team is unheard of these days and it's certainly not anything to be ashamed of i just hope you know justin allgaier can stand on top of that uh championship stage in phoenix or wherever the championship race may be in uh 26 and, and hoist that trophy because he's been here long enough he's had so many opportunities and so many things haven't gone his way that he deserves to finally get there a bit like uh, the denny hamlin of the xfinity series uh as it stands at the moment. Switching series real quick, we're headed over to the corner of 16th and Georgetown in Indianapolis to talk a little bit of the IndyCar series. So if you remember back a couple of months uh, when the IndyCar season was coming to a close and NASCAR announced that they were headed down to Mexico in 2025 for the Mexico City race, Pato Award was like, there's no reason IndyCar could not have beat NASCAR to the punch here. Um, obviously, Pato is a Mexican national. Having a race there would be great for him. It's a home race and he is wildly popular. Well, that led IndyCar CEO Mark Miles to be like, Pato's, Pato's popularity is growing. He's getting on some billboards now, but he's still not as popular as Adrian Fernandez, the former open-wheel driver, former IndyCar driver from years past. Well, that led Pato and others in the IndyCar series to be like, what what are we talking about here? And Pato created those Pato Who uh, shirts, hats, and billboards that you see around Indianapolis. And everybody's like, Pato Ward is super popular. Mark Miles 
uh, sounded pretty ignorant when he said that. Well, Pato Award was in a Mexico City mall on Wednesday night for an appearance ahead of his free practice one outing uh, for the McLaren F1 team, and it was an absolute mob scene. It looked like Justin Bieber trying to walk through the mall. It looked like any big time like pop artist in America trying to do a public appearance. Everybody just absolutely swarmed him. The photo of Pato Award standing in the center with hordes of people around him is both very cool and also very concerning at the same time because that is like borderline out of control. You have people on the second floor of the mall looking down in the concourse at where he's at. Um, I am constantly amazed by the popularity of the Kit Kat brand outside of America. In America, we look, Kit Kats are fine, right? Like um, if they're in like the mixed bag of candy, I'll eat one, but I'm never gonna search out a Kit Kat. However, when I go to a Jungle Gems for all the Cincinnati locals here, you can go to the world food section and like Asian countries love Kit Kat. You can get green tea Kit Kats. You can get cookies and cream Kit Kat. Like there's a ton of Kit Kats there. They're very popular down in Mexico, very popular over in England as well. And in America, I feel like we kind of just look past Kit Kat. Uh, so that was a Kit Kat, uh, you know, talk that I don't think anybody expected, including myself. But Pato Award is incredibly popular, and no IndyCar driver is getting that same uh, fan reaction wherever they go in the world. The only person that may come close to that is Augustine uh, Canapino, but does he even count at this point? Because he's not an IndyCar driver anymore, and he is a uh, motorsport hero down in Argentina. Uh, regardless of how many dumb things they say on the internet, they still do uh, very much love him. But for all the current IndyCar drivers, you can put Joseph Newgarden in a mall for a public appearance, and there's going to be like probably a line of people, but not like what Pato Award had. Nobody in IndyCar is drawing that level of a crowd. You can send uh, Scott McLaughlin to New Zealand. You can send Will Power to Australia. They are not getting that type of fan reception. The only person that may May is Takuma Sato, and when he goes back to Japan, he's a national hero. He's a two-time Indianapolis 500 winner, but nobody currently is getting that same reaction that Pato Award got on Wednesday at that Mexico City mall, and he very much is popular, and IndyCar very much should be in Mexico City. IndyCar's solution to this is to be like, hey, we have a race in Dallas coming up, and that's close to Mexico. I mean, yeah, it's like Mexico adjacent. You got that going for you. But IndyCar absolutely should have a race in Mexico City. There's no reason that they shouldn't right now. And ultimately comes down to the IndyCar, um, you know, C-suite just kind of dragging their feet on this entire thing and, and not wanting to take that risk, which is very, very much on brand for the Penske regime and Penske Entertainment over there. Now, of course, they are spending rumored to be $50 million on this Arlington Grand Prix for the 2026 season which is great. That's a step in the right direction. Is it a race anybody asked for? No, not really. In the streets of a Dallas suburb isn't exactly enticing to most people, but hey, they're at least taking a chance here and building uh, this type of circuit. Now go ahead and get that Mexico race on the calendar for 2026 because Paddle Award is an absolute star. And for an update, in his free practice one outing, he was 13th fastest on the board, uh, about three tenths behind his teammate Oscar Piastri, which isn't bad for a guy that gets to drive a Formula One car about once a year at this point. So uh, Pato Award would very much be a super formidable Formula One driver as well if somebody would give him the opportunity, as would Alex Pillow, Scott McLaughlin, Scott Dixon, Will Power, Joseph Newgarden. The list goes on and on, contrary to what the Drive to Survive Formula One fans think. All right, and last thing, but not least, you've heard me rag about this before, you've heard me complain about this before, but Fox absolutely needs to show practice and qualifying for the truck series, especially in the playoffs. So on Friday, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. They have practice, they have qualifying from Homestead Miami Speedway, and you can't watch any of it. You can follow along on NASCAR's Race Center, which I was doing earlier, and watching the times come up. You can also listen to the radios as well, so there's at least that, but there's no television coverage, no streaming coverage of practice and qualifying, and I think that's a shame for the series. You're talking about a series that is in its playoff, a series that has a really tight championship battle with up-and-coming drivers, and Fox is like, hey, we're going to show you speak for yourself or whatever dumb show they have on in the afternoons that nobody watches over there. I'm actually not sure speak for yourself is even a show anymore, but 
you know what I'm talking about. It's a bummer because the truck series deserves more. And instead, Fox continually gives them these half-assed, you know, broadcasts, you know, remote broadcasts with a booth that just seems completely disinterested at times or uh, is completely disconnected from, from you know, what they're watching uh, on the screens. And then you get bad camera work from time to time, um, you know, ill time cuts from certain shots to another shot, back to another shot, zoom in, zoom out. And then we completely miss what we were actually trying to watch on screen there. Full screen commercials at the most inopportune times, constant replays because they just miss things that are happening on track. And it's like, man, the truck series deserves better. These are supposed to be the up and coming stars, the next stars that are going to move on to the cup series eventually. And they just don't get the promotion that they deserve. And I get it, right? It's the third tier touring series. It's the triple A of NASCAR. Well, technically double A of NASCAR. But it deserves better than what it's getting. And it bums me out that a playoff race will, you know, not have any sort of coverage, not have any sort of storyline building until we come on air at noon on Saturday. And then you get like 19 minutes of pre-race right into the race, which I don't have a problem with. But in the playoffs, you don't even have enough time to sort of lay out everything that's going to happen here. And then the boost going to be remote. And if Jamie Little's calling it, it's going to be very disorganized and everybody's going to be like, what is actually happening here? And it just feels like they're could be a better solution for this. Now, I also understand the reason they're not putting, you know, practice and qualifying on is because it doesn't make financial sense. And I can understand that to an extent. But at the same time, you just really need like one or two people calling it. And if you're calling it remote from Charlotte, well, you don't have to pay for travel. You don't have to pay for lodging or anything like that. You do, of course, have to have a production trailer and a you know producer and everything uh, that goes along with that, which is, you know, you're probably talking about eight to 10 people that it would take to do that. Um, and then you have to have your camera, you know, men and women down in uh, Miami there to do it. But they're still going to be recording a decent portion of that session in case anything crazy happens. They have that, you know, video to put on during the race broadcast to be like, hey, yesterday I'm qualifying, so-and-so wrecked or whatever happens. I don't think anybody actually wrecked, um, but Corey Heim did get the pole. And it's just like, ah, uh, it feels like it could be more. It feels like we're just kind of getting robbed of an experience that we should be able to have. So I don't know, it's a bummer. I understand it from the financial side of things, but there's gotta be a better solution than just kind of leaving everybody in the dark. And these poor sponsors are paying to get on the car and now they're getting a little bit less TV time. And you know, some of them would have been on TV in you know, a practice and qualifying session and they're not going to be on TV during the race just because their cars are gonna be in the back. So yeah, I'm bummed about it, understand it, but not happy with it, if that makes sense. So let me know in the comments what you think about Justin Allgaier resigning, Paddle Award being incredibly popular, and Fox not showing the truck series practice and qualifying. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.